Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be getting you up to date on 8.3 Restoration Shaman in Arena. This guide has been put together with Lontar, consistently one of the highest rated and best performing Restoration Shamans in the world. This is going to be including an update on talents, essences, Azerite choices, trinkets, and the new corruption mechanic, finishing it off by covering your playstyle inside of Arena. To kick this video off, let's do a quick recap on talent choices, establish a good default talent setup, and then cover any adaptations you should make and why. Okay, so a good baseline looks like this. Unleash Life, Earth Shield, Spirit Wolf, Urban Wall Totem, Nature's Guardian, Flash Flood, and Descendants. The first change to these you might consider making is on the first row of talents. Whilst Unleash Life is a good baseline in certain matchups and compositions, Undulation is going to offer you a lot more throughput. So the scenarios where you'll want to swap this is to when you can and need to freely cast a lot of heals. So for instance, when you're paired up with a Warlock and need to heal through the consistent onslaught of a melee cleave. The only other change you'll want to consider is on the level 45 row. While Spirit Wolf is a very good baseline, if you're not the target, it's going to be pretty much useless. Earth Grab Totem allows you and your teammates a much easier time kiting or even connecting to enemies. This talent is especially good versus Warlocks as you can root their pet and then go for drinks or even freely cast. Apart from those changes, that's going to be it from normal talents. Now let's move on to PvP talents. Again, same as before, let's start with a good baseline. Although there is a lot more variant when it comes to PvP talents. So we've got Grounding, Tidebringer and Spectral Recovery. Grounding Totem is a must versus any caster and it then it's even good versus a few healers in some scenarios. If you think you're going to get use out of it, then it's going to be a good talent pickup. Tidebringer not only allows you to do very strong healing, buffing your chain heal, but also adds dispel protection. You'll want this most of the time unless it's a matchup where you can again freely cast and want to preserve your mana. This talent is also not recommended for 2v2 unless it's versus double DPS. Spectral Recovery is a must when you're going to be getting focused or are at risk of being focused, providing good healing and movement speed whilst in Ghost Wolf, synergizing very well with Pack Spirit and the talent Spirit Wolf. There are again a few other PvP talents you might want to consider. First is Sky Fury. This is great when paired up with casters where all three of you are going to get good benefit out of it. Identifying out of the three default talents, you will get the least use out of and replace accordingly. So if you're not getting focused, you won't need Spectral Recovery. If you're not versus casters, you won't need Grounding. And if you don't think you'll get the need the recovery mechanic and HPS from Tidebringer, then you can drop that instead. Another option is Swelling Waves. This talent obviously only gets use if you're the target. Primarily, this is good in 2v2, instead of the added healing of Tidebringer, but you may find some scenarios in 3v3 where this could be of use. And finally, the last PvP talent up for consideration is Voodoo Mastery. This reduces the cooldown of your Hex by 20 seconds. It's extremely niche, but in games where you find your win condition being secure in Hexes, or Hex is very useful to reduce damage, then this is going to be a decent pickup. For example, if you're facing a Mage Disc in 2v2, you can then just continuously Hex the Mage, to reduce his damage. Okay, so that's both our PvP and normal talents covered. Let's now move on to essences. As with patch 8.3, we saw the release of some new ones and even gained an extra minor slot at level 75. For your major essence, you have three options. Vitality Conduit, Conflict and Strife, or Crucible of Flame. Vitality Conduit is the one you'll find yourself picking the most. It's good in almost every scenario. Great at enabling you to survive, great at quickly picking up your teammates, and it even synergizes very well with the free healing of Pack Spirit. Although there are some cases where you'll need even more defense in order to survive. For these scenarios, there is Conflict and Strife. This is especially good in 2v2 as a defensive option, providing you with a ton of added versatility when stunned and even access to the ancestral gift talent giving you aura mastery. 
The last talent option is Concentrated Flame. This is for when you need added damage. You'll rarely play this one in 3v3, but it can be an option for both 2v2 and 3v alike if you need some added damage in the certain situation. As mentioned, with 8.3, we saw the release of some new essences that are very good for miners, and Shaman makes use of one of these. Spirit of Preservation is a must-have on Shaman as your first miner. Not only does it provide you with 10 corruption resistance, allowing you to wear even more OP corruption, but it also benefits your healing surge, making it a lot easier to recover in those dire situations. For your second minor essence, it's whatever out of the major Conflict and Strife or Vitality Conduit that you're not using. So if you have Conflict Major, pick up Vitality Minor. If you have Vitality Major, pick up Conflict Minor. Easy enough. And the last minor essence you'll want to use is Life Binder's Invocation. This is just very strong free healing that is consistently going to be procking throughout the game. Very consistent and very good. Up next, we've got Gearin. In this section, we're going to be covering stat priority, trinkets, Azerite, and also everybody's favorite new addition to the game, Corruption. Starting with stat priority, nothing's changed. You still want versatility and mastery above all else with haste being okay and critical strike worth avoiding. Restoration Shaman has some must-get trinkets when it comes to Arena. The Forbidden Obsidian Claw is absolutely insane. Not only does this trinket offer so much offensively, but on use it restores a huge amount of mana. Great for sustain, great for damage, and great for pressure. Yeah, just go out and get one now. The Forbidden Obsidian Claw drops from one of the earlier bosses inside of the new raid, Mount. The other trinket you want on Restoration Shaman to pair up with your claw is the Revitalizing Voodoo Totem. The Voodoo Totem is used as a very strong single target heal that can even be used whilst locked out, before CC chains, and even whilst inside of Ghost Wolf. Some other options for when you need even more defensive capability are either a Safeguard or Battle Master. Safeguard can be great to keep you alive in stuns, and Battle Master is just good all around when you're getting focused. As a right wise, Restoration Shaman, funnily enough, wants to focus on getting a minor trait above all else, Pack Spirit. Having three of these allows Shaman to be incredibly durable when focused. The best combination of major traits while still picking up Pack Spirit though, is three Surge in Tide, and then at least one turn of the Tide, and then one Ancestral Resonance. Whilst a good all around trait is Heart of Darkness. The recommended pieces are for Helmet, either the Visage of Bloody Horrors from Gambling with Residum, or the Helm of Actualized Visions coming from the penultimate boss carapace. Shoulder, you'll either want the Hooked Barb Spalders from Gambling Residum, or the Pauldrons of Ill Portent from Mount. Then, that you'll want for Chest, the Corrupted Gladiator's Chain Chest Guard from PvP Cap or the weekly chest. And last up, we've got everybody's favorite love or hate corruption. Totally balanced, not RNG at all, and just great fun. Healers, when it comes to corruption, don't really have any specific healing corruptions in PvP per se. Taking this into account, the best corruptions right now for a restoration shaman are going to be passive percent increases to their favored stats. So, versatility or mastery. If you want some added damage, the best corruption is going to be infinite stars. This procs without you even having to use damage globals, so is very good for healers. Whilst not optimal, the versatility on hit or mastery proc can be okay alternatives to masterful or versatile. Okay, now with our talents and PvP talents sorted, a good idea on what essences and what gear to equip Let's now talk playstyle. What is it you want to be doing when inside of Arena on Restoration Shaman? Restoration Shaman relies a lot on defensive cooldowns, especially in order to survive the enemy's offensive cooldowns. Urban Wall Totem is one of your biggest defensive cooldowns as a Restoration Shaman, and is honestly one of the main reasons that they are strong. Urban Wall Totem can be used to directly counter enemy cooldowns, as whilst inside, friendly targets are almost immune to damage. Alternatively, Urban Wall can be used preemptively either before crowd control lands or on yourself before you get stunned. Just a very important part of Shaman's kit you should be making the most out of. Spirit Link is your recovery mechanic. When you know you've not got the time to get yourself or your teammates half to safety, this could be for a few reasons. You're unable to cast or simply just don't have the time before your teammate 
or yourself is going to die. Those dire situations where you have one global to save the target. The other defensive you have as a restoration shaman is your ascendance. This is more of a top in mechanic, best saved for those situations where you're falling heavily behind on healing. You can even combine this after a drop spirit link to quickly recover your entire team. It's worth noting that when used, Ascendance does a very strong amount of burst healing within 20 yards. So make sure you're moving close before using it. After the initial healing, you will then duplicate any healing that you do. This can be combined with Pack Spirit and Ghost Wolf for some nice instant healing. Your own personal defensive is Astral Shift. This again should either be traded for enemy offensive cooldowns or in times where you just need to recover from the pressure onto yourself. Totems are a very important part to Restoration Shaman's kit. We've already covered a few in our defensive cooldown list. Grounding is one of your most important abilities defensively. There are so many uses. You can ground to avoid important damaging abilities from your opponents, so things like Greater Pyroblast, and Chaos Bolt. Alternatively, Grounding is great for avoiding either Interrupts or Crowd Control. Whilst up, you will be unable to be kicked by Counterspell, Spell Lock, Mind Freeze, and even the Demon Hunter Kick Disrupt. Dropping a Grounded before a Polymorph or any other CC lands will also make you immune whilst it remains. Earthbind is also one you shouldn't underestimate. This can be used as a way to instantly slow all enemies in its zone, allowing you and your teammates an easier time to either kite or catch up to enemies. You could also use Earthbind as a way to keep enemies in combat. The same goes with Earth Grab, but this time it not only slows, but also roots. As mentioned, this can be used to kite, slow, or even root Warlock pets so that you can cast. Sky Fury, when specced, is also something you shouldn't overlook. Dropping this behind a pillar can allow your team, if they're casters, to deal a ton of added burst. Your healing stream and healing tide are not what they used to be in previous expansions. Really, these should just be dropped off cooldown. Healing Tide does a little bit more healing, so you can save it till your teammates drop a bit low, and use it to reduce the amount you have to cast. Our last totem worth mentioning is Cap Totem. Cap Totem is a 3 second stun which takes 2 seconds to detonate, making it incredibly hard to land. The best use out of this though is to combine it with your teammates stuns, as a follow up. So if you see your teammates stun a target, drop this, and then after a few seconds, you'll extend the CC chain. Restoration Shamans are one of the best healers when playing versus casters, simply down to their disruption. Making sure to maximize wind shear can be very oppressive for the enemy team. Looking to interrupt damage on your teammates, on healers to create more pressure for your team, or even as a way to stop crowd control landing onto yourself or even your teammates. The same goes for Grounding Totem. Using this as a way to avoid crowd control or to keep your team aggressive can be very annoying for casters to deal with. Now Ghost Wolf has become one of Shaman's strongest abilities in order to survive. Not only does it give you added movement speed and immunity to slows, but with Spirit Wolf, Spectral Recovery and Pack Spirit, it makes you incredibly hard to kill when focused. This means trying to be inside of Ghost Wolf for times when enemies are going to swap, stun or focus you is very important. Ghost Wolf can also be great with Vitality Conduit. You can pop Vitality on a teammate and then sit in Ghost Wolf to neutralize some of the Spirit Link effect. Making the most out of Ghost Wolf is integral to your success as a Restoration Shaman. Our last playstyle is assisting your team offensively in order to score kills. We've touched a little on this already, but you can assist your team with flame shots and lava bursts. Whilst a little mana intensive, Restoration Shaman's damage really adds up over the course of a game. If you need added damage, be sure to keep flame shocks up. More often than not though, the best way to assist your team is going to be with purges. Purging healing over time effects from classes like Druid or Monk, or even defensive cooldowns like Bop or Freedom from Paladins can really help your team in securing those kills. But that's not all you can do offensively. You can also utilize your disruption to keep your team aggressive. So if you see your teammate getting polymorphed when he's close to a kill, look to wind shear it or even drop a ground in just to keep your team aggressive. All right then guys, that's going to be it for this 8.3 Restoration Shaman PvP guide. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill this video if you enjoyed. And if you do have any more questions, be sure to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.